Hi everybody, this is Wes with Pikes Peak Trades and want to give you an update on metals and miners. It's been a couple weeks since I've done the video here and I, I think we've got some exciting things to take a look at. So let's jump right in. This is the GLD weekly chart and you're going to see that these candles uh, from what I think was a significant primary low set in early March have marched right through the middle of what I think is just a massive bull flag. It's made its way all the way almost to the top of this channel and to the 50 week MA. Now it's a little bit of a concerning look on that candle. It kind of has a little bit of a hanging man look. So we do need to be aware that possibly there's a rejection at this MA and then maybe a retreat here uh, in metals, maybe back to this other MA cluster. That would be around 167 to 168 in GLD. Uh, but you know, we, we also just have to look at the possibility that there will be continuation. Remember that bearish looking candles, whether they're daily or weekly, just a, a one candle look isn't enough. It requires the confirming action that follows. So I'm on guard potentially for a little bit of pullback this coming week in the metals. Uh, but as I said, that has yet to be confirmed. Let's just march through the smaller time frames here. And we get into the daily, and we're, we're going to see on the weekly, you saw that 50-week MA touch. And on the daily, this FIB and the channel and the 200-day coincide nearly to the penny. So I, I am also leaving open the possibility that on Monday we get a pop, but maybe it's kind of the, the fake break that we often see where the first go at this fails and then that's what puts in this small degree wave four gives it some basing action for the week and then we can look progressively to move up and out of it so you'll see that on the smaller term time frame we've got developing divergence here on the 15 and 60 minute charts here would be that popping touch maybe an overthrow but then maybe it needs to reverse back under uh, but of course, it's possible that this fib is just too conservative if I take you back to the daily and, and instead uh, we're going to just pop up and out and then the back test occurs on top of the channel. So that's why I've also got this, this 2.618 fib that would take GLD to about uh, 176 here and that means the price of gold would then be strongly. Um, moving up towards $1,900 an ounce. Let's take a look at GDX. So we look at the major gold miners ETF, and again, you see that little bit of that troublesome look on the weekly candle. We've got the miners here leading ahead of the metals, which is what you want to see in a bullish progression. It's now strongly above its 50-week SMA, unlike GLD that had just popped right up against it. And I, I still have GDX looking for its first five-wave impulse. It's labeled minor one, but remember the fractals say that there's five subwaves that make that up. And you just don't know in this first push where that's going to end. So it becomes just a, a little bit of speculation. You have to look at some internals and you look at previous resistances. And for sure, here on GDX, this $39 pivot is significant. So it, it topped the last attempt out of this channel. Um, I think kind of like GLD, it's probably going to touch it and then get pushed back. And then we've got to make some progressive stabs at it. But if we see something more surprising, that's why you got the purple count. So the purple count suggests that the move is just going to be so strong that any back test occurs above the pivot. And so that's why I've got this alternate purple count that has GDX, and you'll also see this on SLV, in something much more aggressive. Taking you into the shorter term time frames, I think what happened uh, this past week was just a really nice contracting triangle. That's how I'm counting it here as a subdegree. This would be the pop up towards that pivot and then a retreat. And that's my primary count is that it's going to take a few more uh, starts and fits to try to get this above that 39 pivot. But here again, if, if it just says, you know, to heck with it, I'm blasting right through, then we could see you know, GDX all the way up towards $40, $41. And then that back test move would occur maybe towards the end of May. Let's talk about SLV. 
So in SLV here on the weekly, and you know, this is the same pivot I've really been talking about for months. It's the mid 25s. And that again is just right where it's bumped up to. And you know, we've got to see power through it. So into the smaller time frames here on SLV, where are we at in the progression? So again, I'm kind of wondering, does it need a little bit more basing before it makes the push? And, and even above this pivot, there's another one. There's, there's the pivot that held uh, this, this kind of the fake break attempt in Feb that also could provide the resistance. And that's where I think maybe this first five wave impulse could end. Okay, but like I suggested in GDX, it, if we see something surprising to the upside, which it, if in fact we're seeing a bullish trend, then surprises are to the upside, we could be in something very, very bullish on SLV, which, which would actually take silver um, up above $30 uh, within the month of June, and then possibly approaching maybe even $40 in the month of July. So I'm gonna leave that there as a possibility. Um, and you know, we, we I don't concern myself quite so much about the just the the day-to-day -day and intraday swings. It's the bigger term time frames that I'm really looking at optimistically for these upside targets. So here here you see these kind of staggered pivot resistances. We might have gotten a bull flag breakout. Let's see if that's good to challenge them. And then again you've got that that very bullish uh, purple count if in fact that's what these choose. Okay, now let me get you into the individuals here. So into AG, and also kind of experimenting here just for fun with a little bit of a gradient background. So if you care about the look and you want to give me a comment on whether you not like it or not, just showing it on AG just for a little bit of fun. Um, and and I, I see, you know, a name like AG, one of the, I guess you could call it one of the more major players in the gold and silver market, it's still just been basing underneath significant uh, pivot and rail resistance. And, and that's really here in the $18 to $20 range. And, and are we going to get a move up through it quickly? If, if we can, I think the rest of this year could be very bullish. So I'm, I'm looking at what fibs out and times out to probably a tradable top in July, a buyable low at some point maybe six to eight weeks after that, and then a, another tradable top, let's say in the October to November timeframe. That, that by, by FIB and also just by look, by structure, seems to be a pretty good path forward for some of these individual names. We break it into the daily, and a, a lot like GDX and SLV, I've got the more conservative, I shouldn't say conservative, the more typical FIBs, but I wanna point out that we could actually see it break out much more strongly and much more quickly. Um, so I have an eventual topping target around 26 in AG, you know, which is still an awesome 50% plus move through the summer. You know, I, I think this bull flag breakout, we're now gathering strength and let's see where we end up here. We've got it on the short term time frame, and you're just gonna see that. I think it's a progressive nested set of ones and twos which suggests that a big move is possibly imminent. I want to take you quickly through a couple other names. So Hecla, uh, wonderful earnings reaction after I think a consolidating contracting triangle. It's up 28% so far. This is just in the month of May. That's, that's not even barely halfway done here. And y y these long-term channels here, have held price in check for decades. It is now, like it was 10 years ago, attempting to move back in. If it conquers it, we're talking about a decades of significance in a breakout. And I think a name like Kekla could double. I think this could be a double by the end of 2021. So looking again, now a little bit of question on the weekly candle, but right in there. It's the highest weekly closing high in a decade. So we, we've, we've really got to look at the potential for a big breakout over the next couple months. Running you through some of my favorite uh, junior names. So we've, we've got Abra Silver, and it's already broken out. All-time high, a little bit of a pause this week, but I think potentially a strong move up. 
This one, I think, could be much more than a double. Much more than a double here on Abra. We've got Aya. So Aya, just a march up in this channel. Obviously, it, it's, it's here strongly at all-time highs. I might be having to adjust these fibs. This might be too low even, uh, but there's that pullback that I think could be happening uh, late summer and then a big move up uh, into the end of the year. Really like Defiance, a bull flag breakout, now at an all-time high, pushing still in this channel. This one could easily be a double. And I'll finish here with, with Van Gold. And you'll notice these tickers are the OTC. They're the pink slip tickers because most of these trade on the Toronto Exchange. Within this uptrend, and again, this, this could be more than a double. I would anticipate here we've got an all-time high in the mid two twos that we could see by the end of the year. We, we could see this thing back there at all-time highs. Okay, so uh, I think really exciting things to look at as I've been talking about. The potential for outperformance here is just significant. It's exciting. I mean, uh, I'm not going to talk much more about the fundamentals of this. I'm, I just focus this on what the charts and price are saying, and they're saying that we could be positioned for some exciting moves. As always, we project, we monitor, adjust. I try to filter out the short-term and day-to-day -day noise, looking at their longer-term time frames. This is a sector I'm still convinced I want to be in due to what I think could be the relative outperformance over the next few months in 2021.